Hi, I'm Plugo, author, illustrator, comic creator, and the art director for Kung Fu Magazine for more than 20 years. But I'm here to talk to you about a project that's really special to me. It's the middle grade graphic novel, A Tiger's Tale. Imagine the story of tigers and dragons and martial artists and monsters. So when I launched the campaign for A Tiger's Tale Volume 1, I did not know what to expect, but it succeeded thanks to a group of passionate backers. It was also awarded the Make More Comics art grant that year and was later featured as part of an art gallery exhibit. And that's why I'm coming to Kickstarter to cover production fees, printing, copy editing, things like that. Books completed, with the exception of a few pages I've set aside to color over the course of the campaign. This turned out to be a popular feature of Volume One's campaign, so I thought I'd bring it back for Volume Two. I think it's gonna be great fun for everyone. Hope you'll support the campaign. I'm very excited about it. Thanks for stopping by. As a kid, as a kid, I loved Kung Fu movies. So I went to Chinatown, trained with a wise teacher and became a Kung Fu master. Sounds simple, right? Not really. My journey, like the study of Kung Fu, was as arduous as it was rewarding, filled with as many secrets as revelations and as much heartache as triumph. It's a defining moment in my life. And while I began studying Kung Fu to learn how to fight, what I discovered was a way to live. Martial arts never came easy to me. I was far from talented and even farther from being the chosen one. It was only through years of tenacious perseverance that I was able to make steady progress. And so I was surprised when my master told me that I should teach Kung Fu and share the art outside of Chinatown. I did just that and taught Kung Fu to my own students for 20 years. I always wanted to do more to share the art of Kung Fu with others, but was limited by only being able to teach those within my immediate area. What about the rest of the world? Then one day, I had one of the deepest insights about Kung Fu. I realized that the punches, kicks, throws, and myriad of martial maneuvers are merely the delivery system for the true essence of Kung Fu, the philosophy and way of life. Having worked for years as a professional artist and storyteller in film, animation, video games, and comic books, I realized that I could draw upon this unique skill set to share my passion for Kung Fu with the greater world. And so I created Shadow Ghost, a Kung Fu comic by a Kung Fu master. The first issue is created entirely by myself, from story and art to colors and lettering. Every panel is filled with unprecedented accuracy in its depiction of Kung Fu by a comic book creator who knows from first-hand experience what it means to be a Kung Fu master. Battle Ghost is a martial arts coming-of-age story about a young man whose search for the truth about a legendary hero leads him to study Kung Fu and, through a twist of fate, becomes part of the legend himself. For the first time in comic book history, you can immerse yourself further in each issue with Kung Fu Skills technology powered by Tiger Crane Kung Fu. Scan the QR code at the back of the comic and follow an exclusive link to an online instructional video where I teach you Kung Fu techniques featured in this series. With Kung Fu Skills technology, you can do more than just read about the Shadow Ghost Saga. You can become a part of it. The first issue is completely finished and ready for print. All that's needed is for you to make a pledge of support so that we can fund the printing of the first issue. Together, we can share the wisdom of Kung Fu with the greater world. Shadow Ghost is the story of Kung Fu. It's about the people, the art, the culture, and the philosophy. It's my story and the story of those that I've learned from, taught, fought, and loved. Join me and become part of the vibrant legacy in a place and time where we might not be the chosen one but where we can make a choice to be part of something bigger and greater than just ourselves. I'm Sifu Curtis Fujita, and this is Shadow Ghost, the Kung Fu comic by a Kung Fu master.
All right. Hello, everybody. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Curtis. How are you? Good, good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, so before we get started, we'll just do a quick little bit introduction. Um, this is the Comics Foo Show, and Patrick is so good at describing what the show is. I'm going to hand it over to Patrick. So, Patrick, if you'd be so kind to go ahead. Yeah, I should pick it up right after you say yeah, you know, exactly. Comics Foo Show, where we stand at the crossroads between comics, kung fu, and all sorts of pop culture. Exactly. Perfect. Perfect. As always. Um, so I'm Curtis Fujita. I'm a comic book creator. I'm also a kung fu instructor. Uh, and uh, my new project is called Shadow Ghost. It's the kung fu comic by a kung fu master on Kickstarter right now. So you can check that out. And I'll hand the baton over to Patrick. And Patrick can tell you a little about, about himself. I'm Patrick Lugo, uh, known as Plugo Online, author, illustrator, comic creator. Um, Volume two of my acclaimed Kung Fu graphic novel, A Tiger's Tale, is also on Kickstarter and was just funded yesterday. Excellent. Excellent. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, I woke up to the news. Well, not really woke up, but by the time I got to, you know, my email, everyone was already asking, are you going to announce? Are you going to announce that <laughs> it happened? So I was playing catch up. But Curtis, tell me, you've got a few announcements that you're yes, about yes. to present. Yes. So um, currently, uh, Shadow Ghost number one is at uh, 100, I can believe 12% funded. So we're doing we're doing well. Still got a little over 20 days left in the campaign. So it's time for stretch goals. And so just uh, for those that don't know, that's just kind of if we kind of supersede our initial funding and hit some other goals, we'll have some additional rewards things like that, incentives to bring other people in, and just for our current backers to check out. So I'm going to go ahead and um, explain to you what we're going to do. So our first stretch goal is actually, uh, it's an evolution, I'd say, of the common backers page. So if you if you crowdfund comics, you usually get your name in the back of the book, whether it's the PDF version or the physical version, where it lists all the backers. So I want to take that one step further and, uh, you know, if you've ever watched the end of a movie, which I'm sure you have, TV show, you see the end credits rolling and see all the people responsible for bringing that thing to life. Uh, that's what we're doing here. So it's actually going to be you will get an online video that you can share with people. Credit sequence for Shadow Ghost number one with all our backers, physical and digital tiers. And I'm going to go ahead and just give you a quick look at that. So this is what it looks like. And so as you can see, these are all <laughs> different names, but this is a, a rough idea of what it looks like. So your name could be there. You get bragging rights. You can show this off to your family, friends. Look what I did. Look what I was part of. And um, we'll go ahead and have some music with it as well. I'm hoping I'm going to start talking to our good friend of the show, Capitan Wallace, and maybe Wallace will supply some music for it. So you have music in the background. And uh, that's essentially what it is. So, And this will be hosted on the Shadow Ghost website. Yeah, probably on the Shadow Ghost website. It might be on our Comics Foo site, different places, and it'll be easy for you to go ahead and check out. But yeah, definitely on definitely it'll be on shadowghost.com because again, our backers helped make this a reality. So right. And I mean, we, they're gonna want to be able to share that link, right? They're gonna want to have a convenient way that they could post that, you oh. know, when, when they're like, you know, yeah. gotta prove their credentials, you know. Exactly, exactly. You know, so this is this is this is great stuff. So you can definitely do that. So we're going to do that at the four thousand one hundred dollar mark. All right. So a little over, a little over maybe three hundred dollars, uh, three fifty, something around there, more, and you can get your name in the credit sequence. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you. And um, but let's get to the, the the thing that's most important is our guest. So Patrick. You're yes. The okay. So please go ahead. I have I have another. Um, long time friend, uh, one of the old school internet buddies. However, we have hang hung out in person. We actually went to Burning Man together many, many, many years. At the turn of the century, I could say that now. <laughs> but I have his bio right here. So uh, let me tell you, uh, Grant Balfour is a writer, editor, musician, mystic, and obscurantist. His, his exposés on Mothman and WD-40 Miracle Cures have appeared in Sun and the Weekly World News. 
His poetry has appeared in Cordite. His travel logs have appeared in Pop Porthole Cruise and Travel and Seaborn Club Herald. Should that be the Seaborn Club Herald? We'll have to ask him. Uh, and he is the founder of the Guild of Scientific Troubadours. He's available to officiate weddings or for probability consultations for a nominal fee. And that's that's his abridged bio because wow, wow. you know he he he's a man of many stories. Let me hey. introduce you to to Grant Balfour. Hey, Grant! Hey. Applause. Applause! Applause! How you doing? Okay, I think I'll make it. You? Good, good. I'm getting by. I'm getting all right. by. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so. So this is this is some fascin a fascinating pedigree. I can't wait to hear more about all these all these exciting things. They're not that exciting. It's just stuff. <laughs> just just stuff. stuff I do. I don't I don't know. I don't know how it all strings together. I just do it. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. And and how long have, have both you, Patrick and, and Grant, have how long have you known each other for now? Since the turn of the century, we were, you know, part of some old school message boards, you know, that were devoted to comics, et cetera. And, you know, we've kept in touch since. We both had a love for comics. We both liked uh, crazy subject matter writing. I mean, grants and, you know, also like the martial arts and, and, and that whole realm of subject matter has been something that we talked a lot about. In fact, uh, Grant was was pivotal in, in helping me with um, the what the back matter for volume one of A Tiger's Tale not just his editing, but his research skills were key. Yeah, I, so, think I made a glossary for that, right? Exactly, exactly. So that that really, you know, and yeah. it was expansive, and we still have more of that to add for volume two. So, but that's just that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, we've we've uh, pitched a few wild comic ideas to right, yeah. different places. We've got a lot of, we've always, you know, batted, batted back and forth, just different concepts. Um, you know, we tried to figure out if we can make time to do push hands while we were hanging out at Burning Man that one year. But I remember that, yeah. The dust storms, it was too nuts. You know, so the list goes You're on. You're also in a Ganesh costume. Let's be fair. Yeah, you have four arms. It's hard to do what? push hands with four arms. Who, who, yeah. who he cosplayed as Lord Ganesh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I built. It was the I most amazing a... thing I've seen. Wow! He and he and his cool. lady uh -huh. were both inside the costume, so all four arms were active. No way! That and, is. So and cool. I think we gave some people there, like they still have trouble dealing with the memories, <laughs> because Ganesh was alive, walking down the street, big wow. elephant head trunk, absolutely realistic. All four arms were doing stuff. That is so slow cool. and ponderous, removing everybody's obstacles as Ganesh does. Yes, as he's wont to do. <laughs> but yeah, that is amazing. Patrick, do you have photos or anything? Any, any? <laughs> I, this I is got, amazing. I think I've got like maybe ten seconds of footage oh my gosh, on yeah. on yeah. something. It might even be like on Super Eight tape or something wow. like that. Wow! But yeah, it's yeah, mostly of the head. It was a cool shot because it was the wind, <laughs> the the yeah. ears flapping in the breeze, the the head. You know, we had LEDs in the eyes, so they glowed. That is cool. But yeah, I really think we cool. changed the people's lives. <laughs> <laughs> the, later yeah, on, during one of the guys. dust storms, we face planted, and that was a whole <laughs> other epic. You know, <laughs> whole, trying to get up in a two-person yeah. costume, wow. you know, is not easy. But maybe that was that was hubris trying to impersonate. Yeah, exactly. God. Who knows, right? Sacrifice was always involved. <laughs> And, and this was early on. I mean, like, how, I mean, I don't know the history of Burning Man. I know it's been around for quite a while, but this was probably early on in its development or, or had it been was still in the 90s, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. 98, 99, maybe okay, 2000, yeah. somewhere right, right at the turn of those things. So not like when it was in San Francisco, right? We'd have to talk to Gene Ching about that. Right. But. You know, before it became like a pop up Las Vegas that it is now, yeah. you know? Yeah, it, it was like. It was a year when they, they they were charging for tickets, but it was still like double digits and not triple. Mm. Like the first year I went, they were charging for tickets, but there wasn't really a fence. <laughs> so people just kind of showed up and some people went to the gate and some people just went over land and there you were. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, this was two or three years after that. So early on. Yeah. Very cool. That's they did awesome. not have the firing range anymore. <laughs> firing range? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. The history of Burning Man is uh, long and, yeah, and not arcade. what you would expect. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. It's a San Francisco institution in, in the weirdest ways, you know. Yeah. Something that purports to be, like, anti-institutional. but Oh, yeah. No, it's very... Well, I can't speak to it now. I haven't been since 2000 i think well it's like it's like that saying it's like that saying about new yorkers right like i i grew up in new york and a saying i didn't learn until after having spent half my t life in the bay area is that uh you become a new yorker when you become nostalgic for how new york used to be <laughs> <laughs> i uh I grew up in South Florida. I still live here, and and I'm surrounded by nostalgia for New York. How it used to be. Oh, I bet. <laughs> this is where New York goes to retire. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. If you ever watch Seinfeld? It's accurate. His parents. Really? Yeah. Wow. Hi, my parents retired there. <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah, my grandparents. I had some grandparents that were over there. So yeah. There you go. Bring him, he says. <laughs> so um. So yeah, so I have your list of fight scenes. I don't know if we want to jump straight into that. If you, if if Curtis has any questions about um, any of the headlines that you've oh. been key in, and and Curtis, we were talking before before the show, and so if if you notice Grant like grabbing his phone and looking down, it's because of a headline of some sort. Oh yeah, I, I actually put my phone away, and I'm I'm making sure that it's not going to ring wherever <laughs> I put it. I put it somewhere else. So, you know. You know, we, weekly world news, um, you know, of course, I think we all or myself, like I remember taking that uh, to my current events class and uh, doing Bat, Bat Child, Bat Child Escapes yeah. from, uh, from yeah, Lab. Bat Boy, yeah. Bat Boy, yeah, Bat Boy. yeah, yeah. And um, it was not successful because I was laughing the whole time I was supposed to give my current event report and had to, had to leave the, uh, the classroom momentarily. But um, an institution, if you will, of, of uh, the, the mysterious kind, you know. Yeah. Um, so that how, how, tell, tell me a little bit about that because you know that, that's that's pretty cool that you uh, that, that that I was involved with that. Yeah. Yes, I I actually wrote for a paper called Sun, but then we we fused with the Weekly World News. So okay. I at one point was basically okay. My 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 brag is I was basically the editor of the last print version of the Weekly World News, but that was as an insert in Sun. But wow. I did write for the Weekly World News at some point, and I can tell wow. you. Um, Oh man, there's so much I could tell you. <laughs> I'm all ears. <laughs> well, when what, what, I don't really want to put you on the spot, but when did you give this paper? What year was that? The when, when you had the when you had Bat Boy in current events? It was like ninety four, ninety three. Oh something. wow, okay. So that's that's yeah. like yeah, that that's like genuine Bat Boy. Okay, that yeah. story. If it was the original story, and it probably was one of the first two. Yeah. Um. Uh. Bat Boy started as a as as an art project by uh -huh. Dick Culpa, who actually you may know if you're really deep into comics trivia. Uh -huh. He had done some cartooning. He's put out some little graphic novel stuff. And at one point he bought Cracked magazine back when Cracked when Cracked was the the pair the, like a knockoff of Mad. Oh yeah. Yeah. It kind of went under and then he bought the name and he was trying to get like a lot of old comics guys to go do it. So Bat Boy is actually his invention. And then the story was actually written by um, the byline is something different, but the words came from Bob Lind, who you may know if you're a fan of 1960s rock music, he had a top five hit, The oh, Elusive really? Butterfly of Love, oh, 1966. Nice. Very West Coast, like folk rock, Jack Nitchie strings. Wow. Um, so yeah, that was, that was everybody in that business was a character. And I, I sort of... Uh, Came into it because my dad had been a reporter at the Inquirer, and I am not an Inquirer type person. Uh -huh. And I went to graduate school, and I got a undergraduate degree most people can't even pronounce, and a graduate degree in English. And I was like, I want to be a professor. These classes cost too much. What can I do? <laughs> and uh, I wound up working for my dad, and then he was golfing with the guy who was editing one of the tabloids. Wow. He's like, you need a writer? I know a writer. He's not very hard nosed with the interviews, but 
he can do the the odd stuff. So yeah, I did the odd stuff. That is cool. And that's how I got into it. Wow. And, so and yeah, I think Patrick Patrick and I share a publishing background as well as a fondness for the weird background. Definitely. And and, and uh, you you him saying something mentioning something about the Mothman and um Yeah, that was a regular sort of thing was the parent paranormal. Yeah. Paranormal and and uh and and um let's call it alternative medicine. Sure. Sure. And and oddly like a lot of um fringe science, which is actually real science. We actually like all the tabloids had much more fact checking than people think. That that's what I that's what I've heard. You know, it's funny, like um have you have you ever it's maybe kind of out of left field, but have you have you both ever seen the show called this um series online called Hellier? Have you seen Hellier? It, it has to do with no. the moth, Mothman and oh, yeah? the, the goblin children in um Hellier can, in Kentucky. Yeah, um, yeah, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's like that, the, the cool bell witches around there and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That deep, deeply fascinating. As somebody, you know, as you know, because we all have that, that martial arts background. That also is kind of those things where it's like how should I say this? Um, there's a certain narrative about what's real, what right. is, what's yeah. factual, what's accurate. And and if you go off the beaten path, you start to realize that that narrative is controlled by a certain, you know, uh, different interest than always, then maybe not everybody has the same interest. And, and you start to realize that there's different aspects to truth, right? And there's different yeah. kind of lost histories and things like that. You know, I, I recall being in, in main, mainland China and I was at this one school on top of this mountain um, in the Nanchang region, and um, Nanchang, okay. were, yeah, and there's one person that I was I was told to he he was there's an internal school, and I was told to push on one of the students' stomachs, and I was pushing on his stomach, and then he just twitched and shouted, and he shot me back like ten feet just by this flex of his stomach, and the immediate reaction afterwards was like, oh, nobody told him he couldn't do that, like like he grew up without that that glass ceiling saying this is what yeah. this is, and so that's great that it's like the, those different kind of schools of mystery, so, but um. Yeah, fascinating. So my question then is, can you no touch knock out the Mothman when he's overhead? <laughs> See, the Mothman is is an interesting thing because it's at that that boundary between what's physically real and what's like a, a hallucinatory thing that people see. Mm -hmm. Like it's very hard to tell with some of those sightings what exactly was going on, and even the way that, um, well, I mean, the famous thing is the Mothman prophecies. The fact that they really were like apparitions that seem to be warning of an event the bridge collapse over the spring river is like that's not like a normal guy in a suit kind of thing you know like there's well, some other element going on where maybe it's just the way that our brains put stories together or you know it's hard to well maybe we need to rewind a, just a little bit to give the, just what is uh, who we need is to summarize the the man, just yeah. a little bit oh, or... we, we talk about injured cold and go into that like immediately but if you want to go backtrack a hair so <laughs> uh, who's the moth man yeah yeah <laughs> a Moth, uh, series of sightings uh that overlap with the ufo lore uh and bigfoot lore it took place around Point Pleasant, West Virginia in 1960, I can't remember the exact year, um, 68, maybe, uh, seemed to be centered around a TNT factory um, up in the mountains there, which is kind of been a, basically like, you know, weird abandoned building. Um, and people in the area started reporting seeing this flying object and they didn't describe it as like a human necessarily at first but it was like a flying object that was human shaped but it had wings like a moth that were sort of double lobed and red glowing eyes and um there are certain things about it where they described it in terms of like demonic thing like they felt something weird and then they looked around and there's this ominous like seven foot tall eight foot tall creature but some parts of it were also um very mechanical, like uh, it's associated with a buzzing noise. And there seemed to be this whirring when it stood there and they saw like, like it might've been a robot or somebody in a mechanical suit, like Iron Man. Um, and then the, the, the sightings, there weren't like direct communication that I recall, but they seemed to grow in frequency and then stopped after there was this uh, major disaster in the nearby river between Ohio and West Virginia. It's a silver, silver river. 
the bridge the bridge collapsed a lot of people lost their lives but maybe the mothman was trying to warn people or or maybe not maybe it's just a weird coincidence and that's my no research top of head summary of the mothman story and then it continues right. from and that. Then it culminates in the richard gear movie yeah right? it culminates in the richard gear movie there was actually a weird thing in the 70s like after that way away people probably hadn't heard about the west virginia mothman in cornwall england only they called it the owl man but it was very similar and it started with kids who were out on a school field trip in the woods and they're they uh were visiting some like little church in a you know, historic church in the woods in cornwall i don't i don't can't remember where but they saw like this figure seven foot tall humanoid same kind of weird circular wings strange like mask like head seemed artificial but flying up to the steeple of the of the church is what how i remember it yeah the, the cornwall owl man something that tied in with the mothman i always find it fascinating like you're talking about point pleasant and all those kind of places when when these kind of strange things happen in a place where uh, how should, i don't want i don't want to like generous but the demographic you wouldn't think would be into something that fantastical and the people that are interviewed are just yeah. like real salt of the earth people that you know like they you know, it, it, it's different, you know, if it happened in a metropolitan city where there's a lot of people with uh, esoteric kind of belief systems and things like that. But when it's places like Point Pleasant and all those kind of places, just it's fascinating, right? Yeah. And there are people who complain like, damn thing upset my dogs. <laughs> yeah. Like they have other things to worry about. They're not like, I don't know. I'm, I always think people are people and maybe it's just, yeah, you, you I don't know. There's a lot of I don't know. I'm doing the same gesture. It's like I, uh, definitely words yeah. fail after a while. Like you can't these things defy categories. Oh yeah, and, and that that whole thing with the Mothman, right? There was there was also UFO sighting, right? Yes, yeah. so the interactions with you, like, like that's what's interesting. I wish I, I wish we were sponsored, but that that Hellier series has to do it starts to connect with the Mothman prophecies. Oh yeah, it yeah, has to connect with that um that you know claim to be alien injured cold and starts to go into. A tangent about him and what happened after that. Oh, cool! That so it's are just there, like, um, fascinating stuff. Are there Men in Black in that too? Because that, that was a big part of the Mothman thing too. Was... I, I think yeah, I think it's it's touched upon. It's touched. Yeah. Upon. The whole thing is about uh, they talk a lot about synchronicity. How all these seemingly yeah, yeah. disparate things start to connect, and uh, it's it's just it's shot really well, really really nice series. But but I'll that's interesting. It out. I wrote it down. Yeah. Have you? <laughs> was that? And I, I can ask this to Patrick too. Were both of you always interested in this kind of off the beaten path kind of view yes. on things? Yeah, from 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 the get go, it was never like an epiphany or something like that. In search of Sasquatch, man. <laughs> yeah. Leonard Nimoy gave me nightmares. <laughs> well, that, I thought that was the Bilbo Baggins song. That that you know that gave me nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, grew up with my dad in the tabloids, so I knew like UFO researchers would be over. And uh -huh. wow. I remember doing a, a report when I must have been younger than when you were doing Bat Boy, because it yeah. was a, geez, third grade, I think. And I'd forgot to do the visual aid for the report. So one of my earliest memories is frantically drawing, a, a, a sketching a, a picture of the Loch Ness Monster wow. nice. on the chalkboard. Nice. I have no artistic ability. I was copying a black and white photograph that I remembered that I didn't use as a visual aid because I forgot the book. Okay. But yeah, that, that's what, like I was giving a report on the Loch Ness Monster in school. That's cool. Cause then it gives that kind of eyewitness report. Like, you know, when there's the, Oh yeah. And you just see these, you know, kind of like, like waves, waves, waves. And here's this, <laughs> this is like a neck. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what the photo looks like. Teacher, yeah. teacher didn't buy it. Wow. Yeah. One of my earliest self-created, uh, or original character superhero teams was Loch Ness Monster, oh, yeah. Bigfoot, nice. and um, a couple of others teaming up. Wow. You have to have some gray aliens, right? You got some grays in there? Yeah, I think that there, there was definitely some alien action. Um, and they might have been little green men, though. Oh, I'm, good, I'm having, good, yeah. You know, and then there was something else. I think it might have just been like a, a ghost or like a, you know, a glowing skeleton on fire, that sort of thing. Hey, Mudasa. Um, so yeah, so that, that kind of, I mean, my mom was a big fan of the work, Weekly World News, so I kind of picked it up early. I remember like bringing it to an art class early on when they said, bring bring a newspaper 
because we're oh, going to look beautiful. for reference and draw from the newspaper. That's and I'm cool. like, Wolf Boy, Wolf Boy, I want to draw <laughs> yeah. Wolf Boy, you know? Nice. That, that's awesome. Yeah, I remember hearing from somebody around the time we went to Burning Man, actually. I met a guy who'd been a researcher in Antarctica. So this was just early days of the internet. And he said that Weekly World News is were like money down there in, the, in McMurdo and the research labs because they didn't have much else to read and the news never got old. It's like, it's not really current. Mm -hmm. So they would just trade stacks of Weekly World News around like between different base camps. That's cool. That did my heart good. Oh, that's pretty awesome. That's really awesome. So, Apparently, so, they don't need more. I, I met some new new Antarctica guys, and they they have the internet now. They don't need they don't need the paper anymore. They don't need. I mean, that's oh, well. that's pretty much the case everywhere, right? Yeah. But um, speaking of the internet, um, mm -hmm. is this how is this how uh, the Guild of Science is? Are we kind of stumbling across the secret origin of the Guild of Scientific Troubadours uh, here? Not exactly, but it's a thing that I do. <laughs> uh. I think it was originally inspired by Jonathan Colton, who was doing these. He styled himself as the as a set as the official troubadour of Popular Science Magazine. I think it was back in two thousand and four. I'm like, I write songs about science all the time. There needs to be more scientific troubadours. Let's have a guild. And so I set up a website at a time when everybody was setting up a website and said, "Hey, anybody who wants to, you just write a song about science." And I'll put it up here, and it's basically been me. <laughs> but once a month, I turn out a song about some research, recent scientific research. Some of them are awful, and I will admit that freely. <laughs> a lot of them are highly experimental. Uh, in the negative land vein, if you remember negative land. But some of them, I don't know, I think come up pretty well. A little catchy pop songs about cloning vikings from old dna and nice but wouldn't that be uh, popular like in the stem circles i think so i like the 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 site slash band if you want to call it that slash project has never taken off musically like i think it's been featured in in some stuff 10 years ago like the geek there's a geek pop thing in britain um yeah, there you go. You're smart. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's awesome. Uh, the the only write up that I that I got that I really was proud of was when I got reviewed in New Scientist. I was like, I made it. Yes. Nice. Yeah. So once a week, I try to get some science art up in the new new thing in the slideshow, and then once a month on the twenty third. Usually winds up being the twenty fourth because I'm a slacker. Uh, some kind of new song about something. That's great. So, and, so uh, you're interested in science, but then you also are interested in all this kind of mysterious stuff. Do you feel that everything can be explained by science, kind of thing, and it just hasn't been proven yet, or do you feel like some things defy those? You know, constraints, you know. I don't think I could have answered this question this way like a year ago. But I think what I really am interested in is less science and the unexplained as I am the way that our brains try to explain things. Like, I think that's where my interests have always been like uh, interpreting stuff. Sure. So how we like, how, how we, how we process things, which actually, if I want to circle back to martial arts is something that I began realizing when I was taking Tai Chi, like back in the day, like a lot of what, gets commonly explained away as chi seemed to me to be like just efficiency. Like it's just a different way of like your body is moving more efficiently when you're centered mm -hmm. and you can actually, you can absolutely feel it. It's an energy that fills you, but it's not like an energy energy. It's more like, Oh, everything's just flows and we're in a different frame and it's just a different way of looking at this, this thing. So it's a real phenomena, but it's not the phenomena that it feels like it is. If that makes sense. Yeah, it's um, yeah. I think I think that's kind of one of the things is 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 distilling away from the mysticism, you know, right? And the scientific method, kind of finding something in between, you know. Yeah, yeah, something that's functional. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's something that I'm very interested in myself. Yeah, like yeah, that's always. Patrick was alluding to to the um, 
no no uh, no touch hit kind of thing, right? And, yeah. And the funny thing is, is everything is still based on the idea of having proper form, proper framework, all those things. It's not like you know, Professor X. You're just kind of like yeah, yeah. Like mentally, it's still based in in this reality, you know. And I think that's that's the thing that people forget, or even some I hate to say it, even some masters forget. They get a little high on their horse and go a different route. So. Yeah, well, well, I think people also get in the habit of explaining things in a certain way to themselves and you just get like, that explanation is not complete. They never are. So it's yeah. a, little, a little bit more. Sorry, Patrick, you're saying? No, I was just going to bring up, uh, you know, Master of the Iron Crotch, uh, Grandmaster <laughs> Tu Jin Chen. Yes. As an example of someone who, um, you know, kind of defies physics with it, with his chi skills. My my dog has just arrived on set. <laughs> okay, I, I thought you might be exercising a little iron crotch there. <laughs> no, no. And um, so I, I I mentioned him because like he'll talk about um like the hard and soft, right? Like um these mm-hmm. feats, but then the importance of like balancing out the hard stuff with his art skills or with music playing. Oh yeah. But um, my dog stole my idea. My train of thought just got derailed. <laughs> It's funny to talk about like the, the metaphysical and the physical. I still remember, you know, um, I met I met some guy who had then it's always the people who do a, a little bit of martial arts are the most dangerous, right? Because they yeah. physically they do the craziest stuff and also their theories are just completely insane. And um I met some guy then a couple years of of martial arts, won't say who the master is. And um he was talking to me and I he saw me doing something, you know, and I've been doing it for a minute, and he goes, So, so are you pulling the chi from your don because when i my sifu train me i i pull the chi to my dantian and i spiral the energy out into a strike and this 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 so i was like well you know that's nice and then um he wanted to he wanted to spar and i don't like to spar with people i don't know because you never know what's going to happen and he yeah. threw he just threw a wild swing at me just to test me and i, I forget i think i, I, think yeah. I blocked oh that's him. charming yeah exactly you know so i, I blocked it and i think I, I backhanded him and he goes and i hit him across the face and he goes Oh my gosh! What did what did you do? Did you spiral the chi through the dantian and let it erupt into the ging in your head? Said, no, do I smack you in the face? Like, it's, <laughs> like, it's, like, like it's like there, you know. And it's like you're still you can have these you want know, to say head, head in the clouds, feet on the ground, right? You know. Yeah, like, exactly. You know? Yeah. <laughs> that is that is, that is a beautiful metaphysical lesson right there. Oh yeah, I think yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but. Uh, so 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 tai chi can you tell me, i mean hold on i but what, what, really what, 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 don't want to lean too much on that because i'm a i was a lousy student and mm-hmm. but i did i did learn from uh sifu Waylon huang and in, in miami came nice. from Foshan. Uh-huh. um uh, and my practice skills are my dedication is not good <laughs> like every now and again i'll like wave hands as clouds in, in a in a line when i'm waiting for something or if I my back hurts, I'll start like doing a little doyu kind of stuff. But I'm I have not kept up with practice. I'm sorry. Well, the fact that you know Wrong. push hands and Patrick's knows push hands. I mean, Pat, push hands is always a yep. thing. Like, what type of tai chi did you learn? I mean, I can't tell you how many people you talk to. Tai chi. Oh, do you do push hands? What's that? And you go, Oh, I I yeah. rec center much. You know, it's, it's kind of that's, that's the yeah. That's we the we <laughs> we had these classes in. Uh, in an outdoor pavilion in the middle of a park in uh, an area that most people I think would just would define as sketchy. Uh-huh. So there's always like a lot of pedestrians going by, but it was in, in Miami and um, people would sometimes like just sit and watch us like do push hands or do like weird applications because we'd be yanking at each other a lot. Like uh-huh. is, it, is there a mass mugging going on? What, <laughs> what is happening? A very slow motion rumble, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, some of it was actually pretty, pretty quick when we were kind of like trying to get off the. Where's your center? Where's your center? Um. But yeah, applications were always a big part of it, which was something that mattered to me more than I thought it would. Like, wasn't what I signed up for necessarily. Sure. Sure. But, uh, yeah, it was very important in learning what the heck is going on. That's great. Yeah, the, the public public um, you know martial arts practice is always a funny thing. Like I had a friend who 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 did Chen Tai Chi, who does Chen Tai Chi, right? Oh yeah. Very deep into it, and he was doing it in the parking. You know, ego gets the better. He's he's doing the single whip, and he's like he's feeling the chi. He's feeling so cool. And this little girl and her father are watching him, and he's in his mind. Oh, I look so cool. Look how zen I am. And the little girl, he hears him. 
her sated there. She goes, Daddy, what is that man doing? And he goes, pay no attention to him, honey. He's a mime. And then they walk away. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, humble humility. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> now he's trapped in the box. <laughs> exactly. Was it the, the, the rope thing or something? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, those, those are the closed door techniques. Right? <laughs> yeah. Literally, literally. literally. <laughs> I, think, I think Marcel Marceau could probably grab some peaches. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> oh man, did you so, ever read? Um, did you ever read the Gone Away World? Nick Harkaway, another guy from the one of the message boards we were on. Patrick, did you ever read his novel? His first novel? No. What's it called? Oh, it, it's called the Gone Away World. Gone away. You know, like the world that's gone away. It's kind of. It's a weird. It's beautiful. It's a post-apocalyptic story, but the apocalypse is caused by a, a bomb that caused like reality to come unmoored. Wow. So, <laughs> um, but it does end in a climactic battle uh, between ninjas and mimes. Oh my gosh. It's beautiful. I've it's always wanted that movie. and I didn't even know it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it is such a great climax. I mean, I, fight scene that, that is one of the best I've ever, ever, ever read. Not a, not a comic book, actual novel. Wow. Where's the HBO at series for yeah. that? He needs one for that, man. I, I, I think I, I forget which comedian, but I heard him say once, like one of his one liners is he's, he goes, today, today I shot a mime just so I could hear him scream. <laughs> <laughs> Unfair. <laughs> Talk about a nihilistic cry. Yeah. You know? <laughs> exactly. So, so, so yeah. This, go ahead, sorry, Patrick. Go ahead. No. Nah. Keep no, going, Curtis. I this, love it. This, this legendary message board. Like, so, so, like, what was the context of this? Was it just like, oh my gosh, Thor could beat Hulk? Or, you know, what, what how did, where, how did everybody connect? What was the, I'm, I'm curious what the scene was like when, when, you know, you folks were. Should I answer that or do you want to take the first crack, Patrick? <laughs> um, did you ever watch the movie The Matrix? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> Take it away, uh, Grant. That, uh, yeah, sorry. That's that's a deep, deep cut. Uh, I don't know what that is. That's a dig. Okay. It started with the British Scottish uh, comic writer Grant Morrison, um, uh, who wrote a Doom Patrol series and Animal Man, and then he started a series that was not with any pre-existing characters called the Invisibles. Yeah, the Invisibles had a fan site started by a man named Tom Coates, which I think was originally called, it wasn't called the forum, but it was a bland name like that. But then it eventually turned into barbalith.com. And Barbalith had message boards. And the message boards, the nature of the Invisibles was, it was kind of like, a, a, you ever read Illuminatus or anything like there's a There's a, conspir a, a conspiracy war going on behind the scenes of reality that you, you only see bits of and certain people have access to it. So like one of the rallying cries at the time was Grant Morrison would always claim that the matrix ripped him off. Like he yeah. was in talks to turn this into a movie, but the matrix came out and nobody like, Oh, we've already seen it. Um, bastard. <laughs> um, but, but because the subject matter was anything and everything mm -hmm. because of the nature of the comic, the message board pretty quickly outgrew that and became just a general alt culture. Uh, might've been in the same spaces like disinfo, but it might've been in some other, like I, anything that I describe it as somebody's going to write an angry email to me about. <laughs> Welcome to it the was not that. No, what are you saying? What are you? That's crazy. But you would have was like, DIY was one of the key things, right? So yeah. right, it was like a this was before social media, but it had a yeah. kind of a social media ethos in the sense where so much of it was like how people interconnected, right? So it was split yeah. up according to interests, right? So that'd be like modern day groups, you know, and then people could kind of bounce around between them, people can kind of keep track of each other and you know, you build bonds based on the mutual interest. You know, were you hanging yeah. out in the comic section? Were you hanging out in the, you know, magic and esoteric yeah, subject matter? Yeah, the temple was pretty section? well traveled. And I've I've heard, I, 
I heard from from some old users, and I can't back this up, that David Bowie was in there. Wow, like, that's a trick. But nobody knew. I mean, we all had we all had different names, and and the software was not like off the shelf software. It was custom made, and that was part of the problem with the place. Actually, it made moderating it nearly impossible wow. after a while. Uh, but well, uh, there was also like a an ethos behind the moderation. It wasn't just a cookie yeah. cutter. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The moderation was was weird because every decision made had to be voted on by a council of uh, by at least three mods. So there's this cloud of moderators. And an Illuminati, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was a a smoke filled room of a star chamber and things on a queue. Like, oh, do you really want to edit this? Yeah, I guess that's fine. Um but uh, it was not only possible, but kind of encouraged and expected for you to change your name every so often in an absolutely untraceable way. Wow. There was a way to tell who was who if you saw their previous comments in a conversation. Mm -hmm. And some of the more dedicated regulars would also like look up the URL of your, um, your user account, like your username. And and remember what your profile number was from the from the address. Okay. But other than that, I mean, who who was this hell child? Were they pumpkin blossom last week? <laughs> Who's the frog? Um. If you and if you're into like rock and roll, you know, Flux blog is a, I think the first MP3 blog. That was a guy, that was his username it was oh. Flux equals rad originally, but then it became Flux equals all kinds of other stuff. It was just Flux was always the thing. The the one thing you can comment. But yeah, there, there were a few comic podcasts that, that kind of were born yeah. out of that, you yeah. know? Yeah, or, Mindless or Ones was uh, was big. They, they, were, mm -hmm. they were big guys. Nick Harkaway, the guy who wrote Gone Away World, was one of the Barboleth people. Um, there's a lot of folks doing a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah. And, and so, and then there'd, there'd always be attempts to do like in real life meetups, even yeah. you know, whether whether it's I locally. Went, I went to a, couple, or... I, I, a, a lot of it was based around London. It was ma mainly UK people. Oh, nice. Um, but I did meet some folks in New York once. One of them came all the way from Australia. Wow. Adam Ford. Um, it was really funny, actually. I was in a place in Covington, Kentucky uh, last year, and um, there's a really cool shop called Earth to Kentucky, um, which is a lot of comics, uh, but also like, um, what do they call it? L like, like modded action figures. So neat. Um, like you can you can get, uh, I don't know. I think they had a was it a Public Enemy action figure set or an NWA action figure set? Something, cool. something like that. Wow. But um, they had some other ones. And uh, I remember texting him when I was there. You know, he lives in Melbourne, Australia. Like, hey, I just saw the, 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 these things you'd really like over in this place. And he's like, oh, yeah, some of those are mine. Oh, really? Like he's in that scene. It's some scene where they the modded. And it's like, oh, yeah, Earth to Kentucky. Yeah, they sell some of my stuff. It's there. Oh, cool. Which was like, oh, okay, freaky. That's really cool. But if you're ever in Covington, it's right yeah. across the river from Cincinnati. Go to Earth to Kentucky. Neat. Get your, get your comics there. Yeah. All your action comics. figures. I used to do that. I, I definitely Frankensteined my share of eight-inch Mego action figures. Yeah. You know? Yeah, these are like professional level. Some of them were uh, really incredible. Wow. And they also had paperbacks. Like, I really loved. They had some Georgia Damsky paperbacks. If you're back into the paranormal stuff. Uh -huh. He was the guy who kind of created the idea of the Nordic aliens who are our space brothers. These were like the original paperbacks that had his stuff in it from the, from the fifties. What, what do you think about the, um, that's not declassification. I forget what they're calling it, but all the, the, it's not, it's UAP now, right? U, UAP. Oh yeah. Unidentified aerial phenomena. Cause you, yeah, you got to have a more military sounding <laughs> acronym, right? <laughs> yeah. But, but the, the, the fact that supposedly, you know, more information is coming out and stuff, but I, I, it seems like a trickle to me. I mean, I, I, I would like to, I, I don't think know, it's not seeing what I wanted to see. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I think it's stuff that would be like in the bag, like a slam dunk for somebody who has this one idea of what a slam dunk is, mm. which is, well, it's a report of something that could not be earthly technology. Yeah. That's yeah. what it is. 
There it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can't draw any more conclusions. Just the thing <laughs> we saw. Looked like a machine. It's going real fast. Probably wasn't ball lightning. Yeah, I was, I was hoping for like, I thought, I, I, yeah, was, exactly. you know, I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, they're going to say it all. And I, I get to actually understand what's going on and all this cool stuff. And yeah, the more you get involved with like local politics, I think you also see that, that same mindset, like, oh, somebody knows how this works, right? Yeah. Somebody, somebody's got the answer to this problem. Somebody's working on this, right? There's a committee. They produce these talking points I need, right? No. Well, it's just like when, well, no the, committee. Phoenix, the Phoenix lights, how, how the, uh, how that was handled initially when you see the, the press conference that was at the, the mayor or whoever. Right. It was like, really? There was like this amazing thing going on that all these people were reporting and, and they just yeah. joked around about it. I was, ah, anyways. Well, what's the Alan Moore quote, right? That the, the even scarier conclusion is that nobody's in charge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. That is, that is my favorite conspiracy uh, conclusion. Have you, have you guys seen that documentary on him of the, in the mind of Alan, the mindscape of uh, Alan Moore? No, I haven't seen that yet. I really want to. It, it is like just absolutely. It, 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 I, I shared it to some friends and they didn't like it because I guess it was a little too cerebral. Like I didn't realize how, how deep it went. But People it's, accused it, me of that. So, <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's a great, it's a great movie. Just him talking about his life and his views and stuff. And it's really surreal. But um, yeah, Alan Moore. Wow. Yeah. Insane. insane. Yeah, I mean, in a good guys. way. In a good way. He's, he's amazing. I've been doing a lot of rereading lately of Neil Gaiman. Okay. Because, you know, Sandman on Netflix and then yeah. the Sandman run. And the more I read it, the more I, I realize, like, he really is kind of following Alan Moore a lot. Like, following his success. Yeah. Once you get into, like, Alan Moore, like, trivia. Not yeah. trivia, but, like, the lesser known stuff. Like, his second run of Swamp Thing or whatever. Second volume of Swamp Thing. Yeah, I took, I took um, BBC has their, their master class called BBC Maestro. And, and my wife got for me uh, the Alan Moore course. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I'm watching them like, you know, okay, it's, it's, it's neat. And he's just so surly and it's going through and going through. And then, okay, they're going to get to the comic book writing part. Like, oh, this is me. This is me. And like the first thing is like, look, I highly recommend you don't get into the comic book industry. <laughs> yeah. like, like, oh, man. Like, but if you have to, and this is, and it's not my That's fault. Grand, if you do. Man. <laughs> but, but he talked about some fascinating things. Like he talked about the specific word count per page. So oh, nice. The ratio between words and all that. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, but man, ooh, the whole thing was like, you get it for the comic book and there's just like 15 minutes, you know, where he's just yeah. like, I really don't think you should do this. You yeah. Know? If you do yeah. it, don't, don't hold me to it. But but yeah, I, I love Alan Moore. And, and my favorite thing is in um, in that documentary, he talks about, he goes how writing and creating is magic, right? Yeah, and yeah. He goes, that's why to cast a spell, you have to spell words. And he goes, there, there can be no culture without cult. Yeah, our cult, you know, and you're just like, oh yeah, all this stuff was right in front of me. I just didn't take yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, big. I'm, uh, yeah, the spelling thing is something that means a lot to me. Personally. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. It's so weird how, yeah, no matter what language you speak, I think the word for magic always there's some something adjacent to language. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're on the subject, then I, I and it, let's put it this way: to what you, what either one of you are willing or comfortable seeing, what's one of the weirdest or most out there like paranormal kind of thing that you experienced that you could say in this venue or that you would be willing to say <laughs> you know i where i grew up on long island that okay long island new york city new not new york city long island new york home of the amityville horror Home of uh, Pilgrim State Mental Institute, where they did oh, yeah. the first electroshock therapy, and wow. right. Um, so we just grew up in these locally. You know, there's a Lake Ronkonkoma, which was purportedly a haunted Native American lake, where there was every year someone would die because the spirits would suck them down. Wow. You know. The freaking, I, I lived at the bottom of a, of a hill from a convent, right? That dominated the whole town I lived in, you know? And, you know, that convent was surrounded by forests. And so we'd go in there and we'd find these mysterious little grave, you know, a little graveyard with tiny little uh, gravestones, you know? And we're like, what is that? So, I mean, I don't know. Did I, am I misremembering that? Who knows? But, yeah, haunted town, haunted childhood, you know. We lived on a pretty 
after moving out of New York City, we lived in the suburbs with enough land that we had a little bit of a forest in our backyard. Wow. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Great in the summertime, but terrifying at night when, you know, maybe that's Bigfoot knocking on the window because it's windy, you know? Totally. So take your pick, Curtis. There's, there's so a whole day. I, I can tell you this, that when I went to go visit, they remodeled the Amityville Horror House. So really, you can't quite but see it's still the there? eyes. It's still there, but, you know, you can't quite see the eyes anymore. Okay. Oh. Eerie. Wow. Yeah, well, I, I, that's I don't have I anything got. dramatic to point to myself. So. Okay. Yeah. Lights that I can't really explain, but you know, yeah, maybe they're explainable. I don't know. Yeah. Um, a lot of things, fe feelings in areas that you mm -hmm. later learn, like maybe you should have been feeling something a little weird there. Yeah. 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 From trusting that inner voice. Yeah. 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 Something strange going on there. Yeah, I've I've experienced a fair amount of stuff, and, and I, I was talking to my wife, and at one point she goes, like I, I kind of like kind of took like, well, you know, things like that happen, and then she's like, yeah. no, um, not so much, like not that often, you know, to most people, like you know, like you're kind of attuned to, to. I have I have this you know? running conversation with my wife about frogs, raining frogs, uh -huh. like when you remember the movie Magnolia, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. She home, she's gonna do that, like. And the kid says, this really happens. Uh -huh. Like she thought the movie Magnolia was super boring because everybody knows that happens. Oh, yeah. That's a thing that just happens, right? My mom used to talk about that. You know, and we'd go out. It would be raining and there'd be frogs everywhere. It'd rain frogs, sure. Yeah. I'm like, no, it doesn't happen. It's... <laughs> it never happened in New York. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's classic Charles Fort, like weird phenomena. Oh, yeah, there's some others, you know, the thing that, and this is bringing it back to the Kung Fu thing, right? The, the, the yeah. kind of the, the thing that we don't talk about in Kung Fu, um, but we're talking about here on the comics. Yeah, there you go. But, um, is the spiritual Kung Fu, right? Which is the, you know, they call it the, the Song Gong, the, the spiritual work, you know? Right. Like we always talk about, okay, there's the, the base level, the phys there's the physical, the internal, usually associated with the chi, but then there's the whole spiritual practice and to be frank, kind of the, the occult practice. And, and that's a whole thing that like, really we don't talk about but there's but there's yeah. definitely people and, and sifus and grandmasters that dabble in that because if you're trying to achieve enlightenment or power right that's like that next tier you know and i'll never forget it was at um grandmaster lily lao's tournament the eagle cup two in 2007 i was there and there was this one i, I, I again I, I don't want to mess with those people but i'll just i'll just kind of i'll speak around in circles but there was this one grandmaster who i knew from his students dabbled in that the occult aspect yeah. of Chinese martial arts. Like it was just, it was just a given, like everybody knew this. And then and he was very high level. And I had heard about one of his top students in the community, you know, from friends for, for years, years, years. And I was walking through the, um, I don't know, Patrick, you, I would imagine you might've been there, but that was like 2007. Lily Lao was in Oakland. I don't know, maybe the convention center or some, some, some place. It's a big mm. place and it's a martial arts tournament. So people are screaming, yelling weapons. Yeah. Are, yeah. So I'm walking through with one of my friends and I see this one grandmaster's student who's a, who's a Sifu through the crowd. I mean, we're talking maybe um, like six or seven car widths, uh, car lengths in the middle of the tournament. You know, there's no way he could hear me talking. And I, I see him through the crowd and I say to my, my friend, I said, hey, that's Sifu so-and-so. I hear he's really good. And as he, through this crowd of people just... Boom, he just his head snaps aside and he just stares at both of us and he's just glaring yeah. at us through the crowd and it was like oh my god <laughs> that was a compliment yeah yeah it was just absolutely jarring and you just you just know there's no way this person could hear and it wasn't like you just kind of casually like oh looks over no it was like a head snap who's talking about me you know there's a disturbance yeah. in the force you know that kind of thing and that's you know i would i would love to do a whole podcast but i wouldn't want to uh Awaken the Dragons were about that aspect of the martial arts stream because it's a it's deeply fascinating. Yeah, but they nobody talks about it. <laughs> I would have to perfect the pixelization and the yeah. voice, yeah. the voice yeah, modulation. We'll just, we'll just we'll just like turn off the light and have my silhouette. Yeah, and have the the voice modulation. Yeah, I was at a kung fu tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and but you'll know it's me when all of a sudden it's like, so uh, did you know that uh, Hulk one eighty one isn't the real first appearance of Wolverine? It's actually a uh, Hulk 180. Oh. 
<laughs> I think I know which person that is. So. <laughs> have, have either of you guys watched Alchemy of Souls? No, what's that? Korean K drama? No, no. It's, it's, it, it's, you know, silly fantasy, but it's fun. It's fun. It's really well made, but it's got, got kind of that different kung fu schools. Yeah. It's Korean. Uh -huh. kung fu, but. Sure. So, like, it's swordsmanship as, as mastery of, of energy spell casting. Oh, wow. Stuff. Yeah, no, it's, no. It's, it's, uh, I think it, it's on Netflix. So it's al alchemy of alchemy of souls. Alchemy. It is very K drama. Like there's a guy who looks like one of the members of BTS <laughs> on hair, sort of a androgynous sweetie boy face. Yeah, but they but they're all like, we'll whip out swords at you in a, in a minute. Nice. You know, it's it's and funny. It's a lot though, of spiraling chi too. You talk about spiraling chi. There's a lot of like raising Don Chen power uh -huh. out and flicking it out. And, like that's kind of what the first season is all about. Oh, I gotta check that out. I saw. Yeah, we were talking with uh, Gene Chang, who you know, because Curtis, I don't know if you know, but Grant has also written for KungFuMagazine.com. dot com. So right, dot com, I did. Yeah. Um, but uh, he was talking about the 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 rise of all of K media in all its yeah. forms and how yeah. how it's just everywhere right now. So Definitely. my last, I, I think I kind of dropped the last thing I watched on that front was uh the Kingdom. Oh, that's yeah, that's good. Right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. What Hangul versus uh, mm -hmm. versus zombies? Yeah, you'll see some similar architecture and kind of dramatic scenes in this one. There yeah. are zombies well, in this as well, kind of, sort of. Yeah, and this made the list of your um of your yeah. top fight scene. Yes, we spent this whole oh, yeah. hour talking about so I many know, things. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, the the scene where the 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 main hero, Hook, nice. uh, has to he has to bring a dog, a special dog, into a house. Oh. Well, it's a palace and it's a spirit dog, but yeah, and he's surrounded by. It's a good fight scene. Cool. What, what else do you have on the list? What would I'm curious. Oh, what else did I have on well, that list? So here we have, you know, Jet Li taking on an entire oh, precinct of French police. Oh, yeah, that's that's one Isn't of it? the very few good American. No, it's French, really, but yeah, Western, it's French, yeah, Western produced Jet Li movies that actually is good. You know, yeah, yeah, re I really like that. And that, I but saw. you know, in traditional American tradition, we'll take credit for that, right? Of course, <laughs> like the, just like we yeah. take credit for the French fry, you know. Yeah. Tom <laughs> Freak, what's <We're>, that? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah kiss of the dragon i remember that weaponized acupuncture yeah mm -hmm. right yeah yeah that's good they pushed him too far man shouldn't have done <laughs> that to his brother and then um we've got uh what else is on the list is the girl warming up her street food tai chi chuan style in kung fu soccer a classic oh, yeah, shaolin exactly. soccer yeah yeah, yeah. Now, shaolin soccer how could i buy well you know it's part of my brand that i mix up words so it's part of mine too yeah yeah, that, um, great. I love Alan that. Tucker, man. <sighs> Insane. She I noticed while, while, while making this list, like a lot of my effect, uh, my, a lot of my choices were all like kind of special effects heavy, which is a little weird. Like, I didn't think I would do that. The Jet Li's not, I guess, but. Yeah, that one was. Well, so right. R, R, R. That's, that's a pretty special. But have you seen that one yet, Curtis? I yeah. Think. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about that a little bit. That's a... and all sorts of crazy stuff and fire yeah. and. Yeah, the dude throwing the, it's the dude throwing the panther or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. The leopard. Yeah. Um, tiger or somebody. Why not? Have you guys seen any of the movies by that same any of that director's other movies? The I haven't. They're, are they good? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've seen what is it? Bahu. I couldn't even I don't even want to try and pronounce it considering how I'm going these days. But <laughs> there's one that's more period set fun it's got that like humor it's very marvel yeah. you know yeah bollywood yeah. marvel because it's like funny and action and you know it's like playing off that i mean the thing is that Mar has marvel done has the mcu done a musical sequence yet like a dance sequence in any of their movies kind, kind of in the eternals they had one but it was kind of like tongue-in-cheek because he was that's he was right yeah, they, they were yeah. Definitely nodding towards Bollywood there with the yeah. little guy with his little assistant came filming everything. Yeah. Yeah, Kumal Nanjani, right? Yeah. As as uh yeah, that was a slick where I should have I should have remembered that because I, I think I, I wrote a sentence specifically about that when I reviewed it. 
but uh yeah. But yeah, but no, but not not like a genuine earnest. I mean, Ms. Marvel nodded at it a little bit. Yeah, and then and then um on the DCN, right? Supposedly Joker is the next Joker movie is a musical, more or less, from what I understand. Is, That's an interesting choice. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. So interesting. Have, have either of you seen um the Jet Li movie? Uh I forget the US name, but it's called Fong Sayak Part One. It, it's um he did it. Fong Sayak was like a you know kung fu folk hero. Yeah, it's was, once upon a time in China, right? I think that's what oh, it's called in it. Oh, in oh no, that's um that's Wong Fei Hong. Um, oh, oh okay, Wong, Wong. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, but the Fong Sayak one is the first movie has probably my favorite fight scene of all time. Super imaginative. Um, the deal is, is the main character is trying to win the hand of this girl for marriage, and to do that, he has to beat her mom in, in a kung fu duel on top of this huge scaffolding. But the rule is, is whoever's feet touches the ground off the scaffolding loses. So the battle starts on the scaffolding. The scaffolding gets destroyed, and there's just this crowd of people, and they finish the fight running across and fighting on the, the heads of the entire right. battle. And just, oh, my gosh, just to this day, it just holds up so much, just absolutely brilliantly executed. Just one of my favorites of all time. So. Yeah, there's a little bit of that in Iron Monkey, I think, which is also the yeah. other, other folk hero. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. I on the, on the, I remember the, the pilings that were burning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With uh, Donnie Yen. And yeah, that yeah. Movie's, that movie's great. Good stuff. Definitely. Yeah, that was like the 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 prequel series for uh, Wong Fei Hung, right? They had right, the little yeah, child yeah, Wong Fei Hung. Yeah, yeah. And the little kid of. Exactly, and that's why I ended up studying the the Hong Ga style because I saw Once Upon a Time in China and all that stuff and. So I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be doing cartwheels and like backflips and jumping kicks and, and the no shadow kick, right? That, that yeah. he definitely so my my Sifu one day I was talking to him, I was like, Oh, I want to you know learn the no shadow kick. Oh, you want to learn the no shadow kick? And he just covers my eyes and like kicks me in the stomach. No shadow <laughs> kick. I was like, that's it? Like it's not like you're floating across, like, no, it, it, it's like an alliteration. Like, like the no shadow means it doesn't have a telltale sign. So you discuss they say that yeah. the hand, the hand lies, the foot tells the truth. Oh, okay. You know, I was really hoping I would be flying across the room, but the hand lies, the foot tells the truth. Yeah. 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 Or in the West, we say talk to the hand. That's the. Yeah. <laughs> That's the <brand>. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Great oh, stuff. Love those things. That's the. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think talk to the hand. I think that's a pretty solid way to to wrap up our, <laughs> exactly. our hour here. <laughs> yeah. Every hour, once, boom. There's, yeah. <laughs> we might have to adopt that from now on. What do you think, Curtis? We'll have yeah. to workshop that a little bit, you know? Yeah, yeah, do a little, you know, like, like pivot or something like that, and then yeah, it's a good, it's a good wipe. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Right, or, or like one of these. <laughs> I can't do it because I'll knock my microphone. Yeah, over, exactly. but, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> but uh, well, this is really enjoyable, Granite. Really, oh, really. You. Yeah, I feel, I feel like we could just keep going and going and going, but yeah, uh, I feel like we got this again. Definitely. Yeah, really, thanks. Once again, I mean, Grant and I keep in touch via text or random yeah. streams, but it's always a, a pleasure to just, you know, hear the voice, have the conversational flow. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I like the way you can't tell where it's going to go. Yeah. At yeah. least for me. <laughs> exactly. exactly. I'll write down some points, but I, I won't go there. <laughs> well, there yeah, well, we had, I mean, we had, you know, I mean, the only thing we didn't talk about was, uh, you know, Epi Thatcher incarnation oh, okay. of Grendel season. Sorry, the that's another. Plate. That's another hour. <laughs> yeah, it, well, because you know we we had um we had Eli Schwab on the other day, and he does a podcast that's specifically focused on Grendel. Oh, really? So yeah, oh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to tune into that. It's called uh, the Devil is in the Details. Yeah. Oh well, that's a good name. And yeah. so, so according, I haven't I have to catch up on it, but he does like yeah. every he you know they'll go they've gone from issue one, and then every time they reach like an end of an arc they've had matt wagner or some of the creative team on oh that's really cool yeah he, he seems like he'd be a nice guy he's cool cool i mean yeah. i because he's you know when when WonderCon was in the bay area he was a regular institution so nice we we cross paths and he's always very amiable and just you know willing to chat whatever you, you could stop him at the water fountain and just wow. you know start picking start discussing mythology and he'd be he'd be down you know that's cool yeah, if you're ever, uh, I can't say that he's like an American answer to Alan Moore, but he's like 
kind of strangely parallel without being very erudite and I don't know. But there's a lot of comic book artistry in his books, but it's not like, look, I'm being artistic. It's more like, <laughs> he got a lot of like indie guys to do a sort of mainstream, not exactly superhero book. It's, they're yeah, they're really, really, also, really yeah. Hmm? His title Mage, where he yeah, of, yeah, that was kind um, of semi autobiographical, right? And and with a lot of the whole messing with the archetypes and yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lancelot, or yeah, Sir Galahad was a black girl from the inner city with a baseball bat. Remember that? Yeah. You're, you remember it better than I. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. So we'll have to arrange to get you onto the devil in the details, get you oh, a yeah. guest, guest yeah. spot. All I'll say is, yeah, I like that. Oh, that one was good too. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Be the hype man. Yeah. There you go. Well, excellent. Excellent. Well, well, this is well. This is how we we usually do things, Grant. We usually right. sign off here, but then on yeah. the show we actually play some uh, what we consider the closing credits, right? And then we do like a little Marvel esque kind of special something, which which hopefully I can find in those couple of minutes while the uh, while the trailer plays. <laughs> well, well, I'll handle I'll handle the the trailer duties. Um, but um, so yeah, absolute pleasure. Is there is there um, a specific site that you want us to direct people to for you, Grant? Um, uh, I think Patrick put one up there, but okay. you know, Guild of Scientific Troubadours is kind of where I am. All right, that's me. Excellent. Very good. All right, it's, and then, it should make it look prettier. You know, it's still like it's more than ten. It's, good lord, how long have I been doing that? Eighteen years? I don't wow. know. A long time. Twelve years? I don't know. Too long. Don't worry that the aesthetic, the aesthetic will circle about circle yes. back around any minute now, you know. Yeah, we blogs are back, email is back. Yeah. Why not? There you go. Well, good. Well, yep. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for coming well, on. Thanks, the show. thanks for having me. Definitely. Thanks again, Grant. Good luck in your, your next endeavors. Thank you. And you at made made the tigers run into the rabbit. There and you go. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> awesome. Bye. Excellent. And and uh, before we close out, Patrick, just um, remind everybody where they can find. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll show the information, but don't forget to check out Patrick's. Oh yeah, me. You can find my work at kickstartatigerstail.com. Actually, you know, now that I mention it, I wanted to to announce. You know, what we could do is an after credit sequence. I have a special add on, brand new, that I want to announce. But we could do that. Okay. after we've played these credits so stick around to find out what that's about all right well then i'll, I'll start that and everybody check out my my campaign as well um you know on kickstarter shadow ghost just type in uh shadow ghost and uh we got that new stretch goal again so you know you want to be you want to have your own kind of film credits that's part of our next stretch goal so it's really cool stuff i'm going to go ahead and play the trailer so you guys can see a little bit about what what we are doing and then when we come back patrick has special update so thank you very much everybody and go ahead and check this out Go, author, illustrator, comic creator, and the art director for Kung Fu Magazine for more than 20 years. But I'm here to talk to you about a project that's really special to me. It's the middle grade graphic novel, A Tiger's Tale. Imagine the story of tigers and dragons and martial artists and monsters. So when I launched the campaign for A Tiger's Tale Volume 1, I did not know what to expect, but it succeeded thanks to a group of passionate backers. It was also awarded the Make More Comics art grant that year and was later featured as part of an art gallery exhibit.
And that's why I'm coming to Kickstarter to cover production fees, printing, copy editing, things like that. Books completed, with the exception of a few pages I've set aside for color over the course of the campaign. This turned out to be a popular feature of Volume 1's campaign, so I thought I'd bring it back for Volume 2. I think it's going to be great fun for everyone. Hope you'll support the campaign. I'm very excited about it. Thanks for stopping by. As a kid, I loved Kung Fu movies. So I went to Chinatown, trained with a wise teacher, and became a Kung Fu master. Sounds simple, right? Not really. My journey, like the study of Kung Fu, was as arduous as it was rewarding, filled with as many secrets as revelations and as much heartache as triumph. It's a defining moment in my life, and while I began studying Kung Fu to learn how to fight, what I discovered was a way to live. Martial arts never came easy to me. I was far from talented and even farther from being the chosen one. It was only through years of tenacious perseverance that I was able to make steady progress. And so, I was surprised when my master told me that I should teach Kung Fu and share the art outside of Chinatown. I did just that and taught Kung Fu to my own students for 20 years. I always wanted to do more to share the art of Kung Fu with others, but was limited by only being able to teach those within my immediate area. What about the rest of the world? Then one day, I had one of the deepest insights about Kung Fu. I realized that the punches, kicks, throws, and myriad of martial maneuvers are merely the delivery system for the true essence of Kung Fu, the philosophy and way of life. Having worked for years as a professional artist and storyteller in film, animation, video games, and comic books, I realized that I could draw upon this unique skill set to share my passion for Kung Fu with the greater world. And so I created Shadow Ghost, a Kung Fu comic by a Kung Fu master. The first issue is created entirely by myself, from story and art to colors and lettering. Every panel is filled with unprecedented accuracy in its depiction of Kung Fu by a comic book creator who knows from first-hand experience what it means to be a Kung Fu master. Battle Ghost is a martial arts coming of age story about a young man whose search for the truth about a legendary hero leads him to study Kung Fu and through a twist of fate becomes part of the legend himself. For the first time in comic book history, you can immerse yourself further in each issue with Kung Fu skills technology powered by Tiger Crane Kung Fu. Scan the QR code at the back of the comic and follow an exclusive link to an online instructional video where I teach you Kung Fu techniques featured in this series. With Kung Fu skills technology, you can do more than just read about the Shadow Ghost Saga. You can become a part of it. The first issue is completely finished and ready for print. All that's needed is for you to make a pledge of support so that we can fund the printing of the first issue. Together, we can share the wisdom of Kung Fu with the greater world. Shadow Ghost is the story of Kung Fu. It's about the people, the art, the culture, and the philosophy. It's my story and the story of those that I've learned from, taught, fought, and loved. Join me and become part of the vibrant legacy in a place and time where we might not be the chosen one, but where we can make a choice to be part of something bigger and greater than just ourselves. I'm Sifu Curtis Fujita, and this is Shadow Ghost, the Kung Fu comic by a Kung Fu master. we're back we're back um so curtis you know mm-hmm. I, I just checked right now my campaign is at about 101 percent. so nice. that's that's a nice you know me in numbers right that's a nice little number um but i've been thinking about stretch goals right and i'm, I'm not quite ready to announce anything yet but i did find something cool that i think i wanted to add to the campaign specifically yeah. right I want to add a new add-on. Nice. And so I've only got five of these, right? These were this was a this is what I call my 12 monkeys sticker sheet. This was <laughs> this was one of the the secret rewards that I had for one of last year's t- reward tiers. Mm-hmm. You know, for the 
volume one campaign. Yeah. But um, Love it. I found out that I've still got five more of these, right? They're transparent stickers. They're die cut, 12 monkeys and the monkey king. So I kind of announced it to my backers last night. And then yeah. I just added these to my campaign today as just this little extra special add on because, you know, for those people who like stickers, you know, and plus, you know, my very popular Sun Wukong illustration, that illustration has been a poster. It's been a t-shirt. It's available on almost anything in my, you know, online store, but now it's just like the centerpiece of these other 12 monkeys that I've come up with. I like it. I love it a lot. I love, I love like the, the difference in styles, right? And you got that really cartoony one on the far upper right. Then the baboon on the bottom, a little bit more illustrative. And then, but yeah, yeah. it's awesome. I really like that. Thank, thank you. Yeah, I did all of these. This, this is how I'm teaching my, well, with the exception of Sun Wukong, which I did in Photoshop, right? Mm -hmm. This is how I'm teaching myself procreate nice by, by tackling a you know why well, I, I haven't in a while but i would just tackle a new monkey and really like you know kind of research it so i can kind of i have like a little file with a write-up on each one of these monkeys you know the golden snub-nosed monkey which was the one that's renowned for monkey picked tea you know uh -huh. yeah although that's kind of a not necessarily true but that's another comic I'm working on is the true history of monkey pick tea. But nice. I'll, I'll have to go into that in the future. That's great. I really like it. Excellent. Thanks. Really great silhouettes too. Great silhouettes on all of them. Really reads well. It was, you know, it's a trippy thing to try and be able to ensure a good, you know, die cut mm -hmm. as well. And the fact that they're transparent. So you could just kind of put a monkey anywhere. Oh, nice. Okay. So it doesn't have that white, white border. It's actually... Like yeah, exactly. That was the it was it was kind of hard to find a, a place where I can do transparent sticker sheet with the die cut uh -huh. at a good price, you know. Yeah, totally. And only as many like I only I think I only originally printed out like ten of these. Okay. So, this still so like you know, it's it's a rare printer that'll let you do that. So that's great. So yeah. yeah so anyway, limited edition. You yeah. know, limited supplies. New add-on. I think I set it so that it'll only last a week because actually I got inspired to work on a new sticker sheet, which I'm pretty excited on. Nice. But I don't want to spill the beans on that until next week. So this one's only for a week, and then the new one will come out, which I think will be pretty sweet. Very good. And, and as a reminder, you can always change you know, your pledge and add these on after the fact. So even if you've already backed, right, Patrick, you can still go in. And go ahead and that's right that's one of the things that kickstarter encourages folks to do is um you know keep you know as opposed to just doing a billion reward tiers mm -hmm. keep the reward tiers more simple and then just make add-ons an option for folks so that people can always come back and be like oh i need more stickers in my life definitely or more ninja stars, you know. I I was talking to one of my backers who got the the ninja star, which I, you know, I I put them away for safekeeping. I should have kept one handy, but uh, but yeah, it's always fun when when a backer specifically picked out a ninja star. Those things are just, <laughs> it's like it's a it's a game for me, you know, like no, totally, and that that's kind of the fun part. I mean, with things being the way they are, the fact that we can have all these offerings we can access this kind of stuff is kind of neat you know because you know before all these kind of you know direct printing kind of options and things like that you know um you'd have to actually be a full-blown company to access all these different things but the great thing is now like you know individuals like yourself and me can do cool projects like this cool one-offs you know and that just makes it even more neat so yeah and I'm still working on a commercial specifically for that Ninja Star. Cool. You know, just, just we'll see if I can get it done in time with <laughs> everything else that's going on. But the campaign know. behind the campaign, right? I, exactly, right? Well, this is all going to the documentary, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the final. The monkey said the documentary, years in the making. <laughs> yeah. how, you should calculate how many cups of coffee, right? It takes, or 
cups of tea. Right, coffee. Oh, the, the, I can do a Venn diagram of coffee and tea and which one, you know, which one I did what on. Yeah, work it into oh. the budget. You know, and the next one, the pie chart has coffee. You know, it's like, you know, like a six, 30% of the graph will be coffee. <laughs> yes. And then, sorry, guys, I have really expensive taste. Yeah, exactly. you know? But um, so anyway, yeah, I just wanted to share this little thing because uh, it's something I had been quietly working on and wanting sure. to make you know, make something special out of these five sheets. I'd rather them go out to people than to just be, you know, under a pile of other things, you know? Definitely, definitely. It's be better out in the wild, as it were. So. Exactly, exactly. So let's, uh, let's uh, put that away. Great. And um, yeah, I guess well, the last thing that we should, I should also share is on this monitor. Mm -hmm. Oops, that's not the button I want. There it is. Sorry for the dead air, folks, but. All right, coming you know, very soon. What, in about how much longer? About half hour? What are we looking at? Let's in an hour, we can say. In, in an hour, we'll yeah. have. Uh, Special guest JC Carter and his art team here. So that's gonna be that's gonna be a fun conversation. Excellent. Shaolin Nun in the house. So coming very soon. Well, good. Um, well, I guess we'll we'll, we'll close it up here. If I, if I can just share one more thing, just as a reminder. Um, uh, as as I mentioned earlier, um, for the Shadow Ghost campaign, don't forget we have the new stretch goal of credits, you can be part of the end credit sequence to the campaign. So you have your name there, there'll be an online video with some motion graphics, also some music, all the great stuff. So if you've, you've always wanted to have your name in the credits of your favorite film, anime, something like that, uh, this is the tier for you. This is the next level reward for all backers, digital and physical. And we're looking at the $4,100 mark for that. So take a look at it. And um, on that note, Want to close it out? Yes, we'll 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 see you. We'll see you in an hour. Definitely. All right, All right take care, All everybody. Right. See you then.